Great. So good morning once again. And uh, a healthy summer, Bezrat Hashem, a safe and healthy summer to everyone. After this uh, Chag HaShavu, it's a very special Chag, very special celebration. So uh, um, we, we get a lot of power specifically regarding the whole idea of learning Torah, because the Matan Torah, that's the, the Matan Torah is all about receiving the Torah. And uh, in addition to receiving it, of course, receiving the powers that come together with it. So Bezrat Hashem, we should all... Uh, um, we should all receive the powers and use them in the best way, in the correct way. So we've got an interesting parsha, and uh, it's Parsha's Nasai. Uh, we, we, will, we, will, we will talk a bit about the parsha, and we might even discuss an interesting topic regarding Shavuot. So in our parsha, it talks about the leaders of each and every tribe of the Jewish people. And the parsha teaches us that uh, when they were supposed to contribute towards the building of the Mishkan, they came late. They did not contribute on time. They thought that, you know, after Hashem tells, uh, um, tells Bnei Yisrael to contribute towards the, uh, the building of the Mishkan, we'll see what's left to contribute. We'll see what the, the Bnei Yisrael, what they didn't contribute, and we'll give in, we'll chip in with the rest, with what's left. But Am Yisrael apparently were very, very generous. They gave so much gold, so much, so much silver, until that Moshe Rabbeinu needed to tell them to stop. Moshe Rabbeinu said, we, had it, we have enough. Please don't give more. And the leaders of the tribes they saw that and they noticed that they won't be able to give anything. But they were lucky enough and they gave the special jewels that were on the Choshen, that very special tablet that the Koyen had, Aaron a Koyen, uh, um, had on his chest. That was their contribution. But they still had a bad feeling about it. They had a bad feeling about it because they told, they, they said to themselves, well, we came last. We gave uh, uh, our contribution last. We didn't do it uh, uh, as the rest did it. So we would like to try and fix it. And they fix it in our parsha. Very interesting. Our parsha tells us that this was basically a portable mishkan. We can call it a portable temple, a portable Beis Amigdash, right? Because it went together with Bnei Yisrael, it went with them, it followed them during their traveling uh, uh, in the desert for 40 years. And even after that, when they entered Eretz Yisrael, it wasn't one specific place. We know that the Mishkan went from uh, uh, place to place and had three or four stops until finally King David and King Solomon decided to build Beis Hamikdash, the holy temple. Now we know that in order to move such a thing from place to place, you've got to carry it. You've got to carry it. And that was the contribution of the Nesim. The leaders of the tribes, they donated the uh, carriages, basically the wagons, to carry the Mishkan. How many, uh, uh, how much did they contribute? And uh, how many uh, wagons were they? So the Torah tells us there were six wagons. Each leader of a tribe donated half a wagon. That was his contribution and that was the way that the Torah describes it and the way that the Midrashim describe it, that made them feel much better about their contribution, right? Because we said that when they started donating towards the Mishkan, they said, you know what, we'll leave it for the last minute. We'll give in what's left. And then they noticed that there's nothing basically left. So now comes a time when the Jewish people in the desert are moving on. They are moving and that is the time when they said, you know what, let's donate now. Each and every one of us will bring half a wagon. 
that will be our contribution that will make up for last time. And the question is, is this an appropriate contribution? The leaders of the tribes of Am Yisrael, 12 leaders, each of them donates only half a wagon. Is this the right way to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 compensate and to, uh, and to donate appropriately? So it's not only that. The question is that the Gemara describes very interesting how they used to, uh, um, how they used to uh, basically uh, load these wagons with the, t the, with the Mishkan. And the Gemara makes a very accurate calculation of each and every size of the beams and of everything there. And the Gemara says, you know what? It was very hard uh, to basically load onto the wagons the portable Mishkan. <clears throat> and the Levium, the tribe of Levi, their duty was to carry the Mishkan. They needed to walk together with those wagons and make sure that nothing falls off. Here's another question. Why? Why to make only, to, to use only six wagons and to go through a whole difficulty of making sure that everything is in place? And the Gemara makes a whole calculation how to place each beam so it won't fall off. Why not to just build uh, uh, 20 wagons? And use 20 wagons. So the truth, so the question is, why not to build 20 wagons, 30 wagons? We know that the Mishkan, there's a very famous sentence that the Mishkan tells us, the, the, the actually Chazal tell us about Beis HaMikdash, and the sentence is, Ein aniyut b'makom ashirut. There is, you cannot be uh, poor in a place of richness. What does this mean? What is the idea of this sentence? There were all kinds of things that were done in Beis Hamikdash and in the Mishkan. And some of them had to do with, uh, uh, um, with dirty uh, things, such as blood, the blood of the animals. And nevertheless, they used to use golden vessels. They used to use golden vessels for all kinds of works uh, for all kinds of works in the uh, uh, Mishkan and in Beis Amigdash. Why? Because you cannot just use a, a, a regular, um, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, let's say steel in, st uh, in a place of Beis Amigdash. You've got to use gold. That is the concept of a Rachvut. Of Rachvut, that means that uh, we, we've got to basically uh, uh, um, show in Beis Amigdash that there's a sense, a feeling of uh, richness. And uh, if it's a rich place and we truly want to honor Hashem, so we've got to do it in the, beautiful, in the most beautiful way possible. And that we would do with bringing golden vessels, silver vessels, copper vessels, but nothing less than that. And that is what Chazal teaches us, aniyut shirut. That means that we cannot uh, uh, do things, you know, halfway and be cheap with that, cheap with that. We've got to make sure that the Mishkan, who is, uh, well, the Mishkan is basically the place that Hashem rests. It's, it's got to be, it's got to be done in the best way possible, in the most, in the richest way possible. And so if that's true, why do we only use six wagons? Again, it's all about the wagons. But these are very, this is a very important concept that will teach us a lesson to our lives. And it can even tell us what is with the third temple. We are waiting for the third temple. What is going to happen there with the third temple? Because we, we want it. We know that Am Yisrael is in a, in, a, in a situation where we need the third temple. And Bezrat Hashem, we should merit it soon. And here we've got a very interesting lesson that teaches us a bit about this uh, Beis Hamikdash, this third temple. So uh, uh, the truth is <clears throat> that um, the idea of donating the wagons was the uh, the head of the tribe or the tribe of Yisachar. 
Yisachar was one of the 12 tribes and they brought this idea of donating the wagons. And why? They said, we, are, uh, we, we have completed the building of the Mishkan and now we are lacking just one thing. And he, the Yisachar told the rest of the brothers, the rest of the tribes, he told them, well, do you think this Mishkan is just going to float in the air? You think it's going to fly in the air with us? We've got to make this Mishkan complete. It's not a, the expression of Hazal is Poireach Bavir. Poireach Bavir is, well, does it float in the air? It's a very interesting expression, but this teaches us the idea behind the wagons. The wagons weren't just a way to move from a, a point A to point B. The wagons weren't just the easiest, convenient taxi in those days. It wasn't that um, the tribes were sitting there and they said, well, how are we going to get this from one place to another? You know what? Let's make, let's, there's no Uber, so we can't use Uber. Let's use the, uh, let's build wagons. That wasn't the idea. The idea wasn't just to bring it from one place to another. The idea was completing the Mishkan. What the tribes tried to do, and specifically Yisachar, who gave this idea, the head of the leader of the tribe of Yisachar, they wanted to basically make the Mishkan complete. And we you know that out uh, uh, making sure that it can move from one place to another, the Mishkan isn't complete. Which means it's not only a technical thing how to bring the Mishkan from place A to place B, but it is more understanding and bringing to a point, understanding and feeling the Mishkan, bringing it into our lives. We know that it's a portable Mishkan, which means that when we go from one place to another, we've got to make sure that the Mishkan goes with us. It's not complete without that. So, in other words, this idea of donating towards the, for, for the transportation of the Mishkan wasn't only for the transport, but it was to basically confirm and to, to make sure that the Mishkan Will, dr will drive and will follow our hearts. It will become part of ourselves, a part of us. Without that, so the Mishkan is beautiful, amazing, and the tribes didn't donate to that part. The leaders of the tribes did not donate to the regular building of the Mishkan. They missed that opportunity. But it wasn't complete. The Mishkan wasn't complete. It was standing there, beautiful, amazing, magnificent but it's not complete because it was not portable. It wasn't, you were not able to move it from place to place. And that is a lack in the whole idea of the Mishkan in those days. In those days, the Mishkan needed to have the ability to move from one place to another. Or in other words, to connect to each and every Jew in his life, in his way, in his position, where he is holding now. That is the idea behind the donation towards the transportation, the wagons. The wagons were very important. Doesn't matter that it was only half a wagon per leader. That half a wagon per leader, uh, it added to the whole sum of basically making this mishkan happen. There's an expression in Hebrew called grush la lira, which means a penny to the dollar. Sometimes you need just a small, small thing, but that's what makes the dollar. You need just one penny, but that penny, the whole dollar depends on it. You've got 99 cents, you don't have a dollar yet. So in other words, even though the Mishkan was built, we still did not have the dollar. We didn't have the Mishkan. Why? Because it stood there and Am Yisrael would, if they would want to celebrate and if they would want to connect to Hashem, they would need it to stay in the same place in the desert. The Nesim, the leaders, and this is very interesting because this is a mindset of a leader. What is a Jewish leader? The Rebbe teaches us and Chazal teaches us that a leader is a shepherd, a royer, 
a roya, and he feeds his people the same as a shepherd feeds uh, his sheep, his cattle. That is the purpose of the shepherd. A leader of the Jewish people feeds our neshama with emuna, with belief, with connection to Hashem. This is something that doesn't always have to do with an amount of money. Yeah, the Nassim did not contribute a hundred million dollars. That's right. They missed their opportunity. That was something that was done by the rest of the Jewish people, not by the leaders. But the leaders have some kind of vision, some kind of understanding and uh, care towards the people to make things meaningful for them. And they have a wide perspective. They are able to see to the essence, to the core of the idea behind the Mishkan. And they know, you know what? Something here is lacking. And that's what Shevet Yisachar tells uh, the other Shvatim, the other tribes. He tells them, what the Mishkan is this? Can this fly in the air? So this was basically the idea behind uh, uh, behind the Mishkan. But it doesn't end there. Because we said, you know what? Okay, so we understand the importance of building uh, these wagons. It was very important. And by the way, it's a very interesting story. Because it says that where did they get the wood in order to build these wagons. There weren't any trees growing in the desert. And the Egyptians did not uh, have trees, you know, when they left, the, the, when they drowned in the Red Sea. So Am Yisrael benefited from all the diamonds, the gold, the silver, the jewels, the weapons even that the Egyptians left behind them. But the Egyptians did not bring uh, beams. They did not bring trees. There was no, there was no use for that. So where did they have, uh, uh, where did they have uh, uh, trees from? So the Medrash tells us that Yaakov Avinu saw in Ruach HaKodesh. In his special vision, he was able to see that his grandchildren were able uh, to leave Egypt. And he knew they're going to be building the Mishkan. And he said, if they're going to be building the Mishkan, it's important for me to, uh, to basically provide them with wood. And what he did was basically he planted atzei shitim, which are very special trees that have strong wood and a strong beam that you can make a, a, a proper wood out of it. And that is the wood that Am Yisrael used. When they left Egypt, they made, sh they, uh, they made sure that they are taking that with them. And they used it. That was, that's the medrash. That was the medrash. That, that's the, the medrash that teaches us where they got the wood from. So let's go back to our six wagons. That said, only six wagons, nothing more. And the question is why? Why didn't they build 20 wagons, right? If you want to have a feeling of uh, uh, richness, you cannot, uh, you, cannot, uh, um, you cannot be cheap on certain things. You cannot say, well, you know what? Let's make uh, this vessel out of... Uh, simple steel. Why? Because it's nothing special. No, everything was made out of gold. That was based on English. That was the Mishkan. So how come here we use only six wagons? This is very interesting. And here comes the lesson to us in Avodah Hashem. It's a very interesting concept. And also a bit about the third temple. A bit about our mission in, in these days. The idea is that Yes, you can have a feeling of richness, but don't let things go to waste. There's a big difference between a, a, um, a feeling of rachvut, that we've got plenty and we've got whatever's necessary, but nevertheless, everything has to come to use. There's a purpose for each and everything that they made in the Mishkan, which means it's not that they decided to make uh, 2,000 uh, uh, cups, let's say, for example. And they said, well, you know what? You've got to have a sense of a feeling of richness here. So uh, let's make 2,000 units. They didn't do it in that way. What they needed, what was necessary, that was something that they actually uh, 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 built. But things that weren't needed, that weren't necessary, they left that aside. They said, well, 
we don't need it. And this is the idea behind the Beis HaMikdash and Mishkan, showing that everything in the world has a purpose. Everything is created by Hashem for a purpose. So there's no room to waste anything. You don't just build things that aren't necessary. If we would build things unnecessary, so that would show that after all, we don't feel Hashem in our lives. Not enough. Because what Hashem creates, He says, Lo barati davar echad lo batala. Very interesting midrashim about King David wondering why is it that Hashem created fools in, in the world? Why did He create? What is it? Why does He need it? What is the purpose of that? The other medrash is about, about spiders. What is the idea behind a spider? And there are two very interesting stories about David HaMelech. One story is about David HaMelech and uh, the Plishtim, uh, the Philistines. And he was captured once by uh, the Philistines and someone recognized him. Someone said, you know what? This person is King David. Wow, we captured King David. We're going to bring him to Goliath or to the, wasn't any more Goliath. Goliath didn't exist by that point, but to his, one of his brothers or the king and we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll need to kill him. And David Amelech is there and I think he got a message from Hashem to act as if he is a fool. And he started acting a fool and they said, well, this person, there's no chance that he's King David and they let him free. They let him free, and then David Amelech, King David, recognized that there's room for a fool in the world as well. Whatever Hashem creates, it's not in vain. It's not for no purpose. There's a purpose and there's a use. And the story about the spider is that when King Saul was chasing King David, before King David was a king, right, there was a lot of tension between them. Because King Saul knew that David would be his successor. He would be the next king. So uh, um, David Amalek hides in a cave. And he hides in this cave. And King Saul is chasing him. King Saul goes cave by cave, checking if King David is there or not. And he comes to this cave. And David Amalek is hearing the sound of uh, the soldiers of King Saul. And... Suddenly, he sees a spider starting to make his web. The web and the web covers the entire entrance. And he has the soldiers coming and the soldiers say, well, you know what? He can't be hiding in this, uh, in this cave. You see here, there's a web with a spider. Probably he, he's not here. And then King David realized, he understood the reason that Hashem created the spiders. This is, these stories show us and teach us that everything that Hashem makes in the world is for a, for a purpose. And that's why we've got to use everything. We've got to use everything also with appreciation, but also what, only what's necessary. That is why when the leaders contribute, uh, they, they made their contribute towards the Mishkan, what they basically did is what's needed, not what they wanted. They knew that they need six wagons. And although that seemed might, that seems a bit, uh, 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 it's, not, it's not plenty, you know, and it would be pretty hard as the Gemara describes to load these uh, 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 wagons. And more than that, the Levim needed to follow the wagons and make sh and made sure that nothing would fall off uh, on the journey. But, they didn't waste things. They didn't say, well, you know what? Let's just add another wagon. And there's no point. There's no purpose. This is also a bit connected to the third temple. And this is what the Rebbe ends. The Rebbe says that the third temple will come down when we'll use everything, whatever we have around us, when we'll use it for the purpose of bringing light to it. Each and everything in the world, we know, has a certain purpose, a certain meaning. We've got to connect that to God. We've got to connect it to Hashem. We've got to reveal how that thing is specifically connected to Him. 
And we know that once every part of that will be complete, all these nitsotsa, sparks of holiness that lie in certain places, once all of them will be used in the correct way, used for holiness, used for kadusha. that's the time when Beis Hamidrash will come to the world. That is the time when our mission will be complete. Avoidas habirurim, the expression in Hasidus is that we've got an avoidas habirurim, some kind of work, some kind of uh, uh, duty to basically uh, elevate every single thing around us in its own way, using it in the way that it was created for holiness and kedusha. So thank you very, very much for taking part in this shir. And again, I want to wish you all a healthy and safe summer. And we should all take these powers, these kohot, uh, 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 for the rest of our year, the coming up year, uh, to continue. Uh, and, 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 and until we Bezrat Hashem, Zayche will merit to bring the third temple down here to this world. Thank you very much.